I've got my hand-built vase and I'm gonna do some Scraffito decoration on it. That's S-G-R-A-F-F-I-T-O. Scraffito, it's an Italian word meaning to scratch through. Got some pictures of just motifs that I like. If you search Instagram or Pinterest, just search the web, you can find some really cool examples out there. I did a sketch of what I'm thinking and I want to have some nice directional flow to it that kind of matches the shape of the pot. Um, and not too complicated here. So the first thing I need to do is to paint the whole thing. I have some chocolate slip here, so it's not going to be totally black. And just stir it up, just make sure that it's all kind of homogenized here. You want your pot or whatever you are adding slip to to be at the leather hard stage. That is the stage at which you do scraffito. If it's too dry when you apply the slip it can crack off but slips generally go on at the leather hard stage. I have a little bit of water just to rinse off my brushes. Even though I'm using one uh, color sometimes the brushes get a little gummed up so it's good to have a variety of brushes. And using a soft tipped brush is good. You can use any sort of brush. I don't recommend using like a chip brush. It'll work but this is really coarse and it's gonna leave streaks. A softer brush is gonna give you a nice coating without a lot of streaks. So here's a bigger brush I can start with and it's gonna just cover more area. I'll try and sort of all go in one direction as I paint it on. And I'm gonna scratch it off of the lip. So maybe I'll be a little more careful around the lips here. And you gotta build up three layers. Maybe two will do it, but better to be safe than sorry. You know, it'll look like one coat is enough. It just looks like that but when you fire it, it'll thin out. And especially if you go to a higher temperature, if you go to cone 10, it's really gonna thin out. If you put glaze on it, it's really gonna thin out. So paint all the way down to the bottom. I'll even paint underneath a little bit just to make it all unified. This slip will not flux much um, at least not enough to cause your piece to stick to the shelf. It's not going to really melt a whole lot. So you can paint it on the bottom. Whereas glaze, you can't paint on the bottom or it'll cause your piece to stick. Get it on there nice and even. Don't let it pool anywhere. If it goes on too thick in one spot and pools, it may want to crack off. And this slip is just basically clay with more water in it and some colorants. It's been screened so it's nice and smooth. It's been a little over 10 minutes and it looks less glossy. And if I carefully touch it with my finger, I don't see any slip coming off. So I can pick it up. Maybe I'll just test it a little bit more. Yeah, just barely dry enough here. If I don't care that much about how the bottom looks, I could just set it right back down. Some will probably rub off. Or I could take a sponge, hopefully a clean sponge, and set it there. Now I can wait another 10 minutes or so. You can see now that it's much less glossy. Touch it carefully. Looks good. Now my brushes have been sitting and they got a little gummed up. So I'll rinse them off in the bucket just to get some fresh bristles that are going to soak up more slip. Squeeze it out. Same thing here. Now because I've already covered a lot of this surface, 
I need to make sure to keep track of where I have and where I haven't painted the slip. Sometimes you're working, you're talking to a friend, you're getting into your podcast, and you just forget where you've been. And then makes it harder to get an even coating. So just try to be sort of systematic about the next coats, the coats once you already have. Sometimes it's a good idea if you have a banding wheel or something to rotate it while you're painting the slip on, like on the body. But we're working at home with limited resources here, so we'll just carefully paint it one side and then the other. Scrofito, meaning to scratch through. The idea is that you scratch through and you reveal the clay underneath. So if you have a light clay body like I do, then you want to paint a dark slip on it to scratch through the dark and reveal the light, and vice versa. You can get a really nice graphic look, like a woodcut, high contrast, and just the character of carving at the clay generally has a really nice look to it. Check the bottom. See how it's kind of sticking on there? You got to be careful that you don't have a bad edge down here. That's fine. Just look this over a little bit. In my drawing, I started by adding these lines so I can see where the eyes should go. So they kind of follow a neat trail. And I'll use my needle tool and kind of sketch some lines in there. If you mess up a little bit, that's OK. You can paint more slip over it, as long as you don't carve too deep in there with your error. It's important to at least have a good idea of what you're going to do before you do it. Because you don't want to make too many mistakes here. Here I was able to kind of smooth it out with my finger, but better. Here I was able to smooth it out with my finger. Whatever. <laughs> I want to make it kind of symmetrical. So I'll look at the other side as I'm doing this side. Carefully sketching it and planning it so that once I go to really remove that material, I know that things are going to be where I want them to be, where they're all going to work together. And I'm using a design that's going to work with the shape of the piece. It's going to highlight it. shouldn't fight the form too much. It should just kind of work with it, enhance the form. Now that I've got it sketched out, I'm ready to start doing some of my more detailed carving. And I can use my wooden modeling tool, and I might even sharpen the end a little bit. I can use my trimming tool. That can work. Really the best tool, if you have it, is the B3 cleanup tool. That can be good for detail. But I'm going to try and use my wooden modeling tool, because that might be one of the few tools that you have. So I'm going to sharpen the end just a little bit. You could also use a chopstick with a sharpened end. If you ever have a place to rest your hand a little bit, kind of resting it gently on there. Sometimes I'll hold my wrist while I'm working and that can give me some stability. 
for the sake of continuity so that these all kind of match, I'm just going to go around and carve the outline of each of my eyes so that they all have a similar character. Sometimes if you work too much in one spot and then you move on to other spots, you kind of forget what you did at the beginning. You kind of have a different, slightly different approach. So in order to give a piece unity, in order for all the parts to develop together and look like they belong together, generally you want to move your way, work your way around the piece and develop all the parts together. Now I'm smoothing out all of these lines that were used as my guide because I have all of my eye shapes sketched in here and I no longer need these marks. Here I have it just propped up on a little yogurt container. Makes it easier to get to the bottom so I'm not hunching over it trying to get in there. Now I can start getting some more detail. I'm using the B3 Kemper B3 cleanup tool here. You could keep using your sharpened wooden modeling tool. You could use a razor blade. You could use your needle tool a little bit. Here I've decided to simplify my design a little bit to make it more legible so there's more white space here to give more contrast. It's good to step back from it every now and then and look at it as a whole and see how all the parts are working together. See if you're heading in the right direction, if you need to change strategy a little bit. I decided that I think I want to take up a little bit more space here and outline the eye and give it a nice lid. This way, I have a variety of types of line. I have thicker line, thinner lines, and some open white space. And then this way, the eyes take up a little more space. I'm mostly done with the decoration down here, and now I'm going to clean up the separation between the clay and the slip right along the lip. Now I can use a chip brush with this cut edge that makes it a little bit stiffer to remove some of the bits on there. 
do a little more touch up on here. I could come back with some slip a little bit and touch up any spots that got schmutzed. I'll sign the bottom. Now I can leave this to dry slowly. I'll drape some plastic on it loosely and allow it to dry nice and slow. Protect those rims with a little plastic right on top. Let some air get underneath there. Leave that for about a week. Take the plastic off. Maybe let it dry even another week and then it'll be ready to fire. This is cone 10 clay. I could fire it to cone 10. I'll probably fire it to cone 6. Put a cone 6 clear on it and that way it'll preserve a lot of the subtlety to it. Sometimes when you fire something like this with Scrafito to a higher temperature you start to get more transparency in the dark slip. You might lose some of the contrast and the subtlety at higher temperatures.